this particular uh, demo, I will first go to the dot module file and I will show you a hook that I have written to add a validation on the link field. So I have written this particular hook. It is called as hook form base form ID order. Now this will basically check the node type uh, and it will add a validate handler. Our custom validate handler is this, uh, which in turn basically uh, looks for the feed URL value uh, in the submitted data and it will check if the submitted URL contains the text UD. Uh, if the text is not present, then it is going to throw you an error saying that this particular URL is invalid and you are supposed to enter YouTube URLs only. So this is the error you get if you try to enter any URL other than the YouTube URL. So this is the validation that we have added. Let's see if this validation works. To do that, or to check that, we go to the site again and I will try to add, uh, add the content over here. Let's say the content would be trailer of the movie Soul. I'll add a URL, anything other than the YouTube URL. Let's say the URL is google.com slash video one and I'll add the summary. And let's hit the save button now. Okay, so we got an error. It says uh, the link is invalid and uh, you are supposed to add YouTube URLs only. It is it, it, it's what is expected as per the code we have written. Now, let's try to do the same thing again, but let's try to do this using a REST API. Let's try to create the content using REST API. Now, uh, to give you a heads up about the backend information, I have added uh, four modules over here from the code. Uh, I have enabled all the REST modules and I have also downloaded a REST UI module. Uh, that's how I am working with the REST APIs to show you the demo. Uh, I'll try to create the content now. I'll go to Postman. Uh, we will not go to uh, go into details about this, like how I have set up and everything. Uh, I am trying to create a content over here. The type will be movie trailer. Then the title will be story. And I am entering the video URL as this. Now, please note that this is a non-YouTube URL and I am entering the video summary. Let me hit the save button now. Or the send button over here. I click on send. Uh, if you observe carefully, uh, we got the response from the server where we got the node ID. Now, this is not as uh, this is not what we wanted actually. Uh, entering the non-YouTube URL, I mean, this is not what the business wants, and there should have been an error. But we did not get an error because we have added the validation on the form. But user is trying to create the content through REST API. Now, let's go to the disadvantage. So this, this is basically a disadvantage where when you add a validation through form order, you get uh, your form validated only and anything or any other mode of node creation will still be able to create or bypass the validations. In our case, we were able, able to bypass the validations through REST API. So this is the disadvantage and this is something, you know, uh, this is a very big one. Uh, let's move ahead. Okay, just before proceeding further, I would like to introduce myself. We certainly skipped this particular part. So I am Kunal Kusija. Uh, I am working with Agilent as a Drupal engineer and I am based out of Mumbai, India. Uh, I have been working with uh, Drupal since last seven and a half years. And I have mainly been working with Drupal backend and sometimes frontend too. 
and these are the some these are some places where you can reach out to me. Yeah, so it is about me and win for further. Now we saw the disadvantage about forms or the form validations. Uh, we had this problem in Drupal 7, but you know, Drupal 8 certainly solved this problem using or uh, introducing uh, symphony validator component. Uh, uh, we can write validation once using symphony validator component and we can get our forms or entities validated without repeating our code. Like in Drupal 7, we wrote the validation for uh, forms. Uh, if you wanted to validate our entities uh, when they were created using the REST API, then we had to write validations for the REST API as well. That was like repeating your validations at multiple places. But using this, uh, this is like uh, writing your validation once and reusing them at multiple places. Now to utilize this particular component, uh, we should know two main concepts like how you can create or use this particular component in Drupal. So the very first concept is, uh, or there is a class called as constraint. Now it is a class from Symfony validator component. Uh, using this class, you have to define rules. That rules can be like, is my field null? Is it true? Oh, is that a UFO and a very important one, etc. So you, you can write multiple rules over here using the constraint class. And Symphony Validator component says after defining the constraints, you have to write constraint validator class as well. So this particular class constraint validator, it is going to contain all the logic, all the backend validation logic to support your constraints. So if you have a constraint called as is that UFO. Uh, you are going to have a class or the constraint validator class for that particular constraint. Uh, now, this is a very theory part of it. You will see all this in action when we see the demo and the code. So, I'll move forward. Now, one thing to note over here is constraints and the constraint validators. These, both, these are both the classes uh, provided by Symphony Validator component and Drupal uh, recognizes them only when the developers create uh, plugins for it. So in Drupal, the integration part of the integration between Drupal and Symphony Validator is that uh, you have to define constraint and constraint validators as plugins, out of which your constraint class should be an annotated plugin. So if your class has an annotation of constraint, then Drupal will recognize uh, your class as a constraint. Uh, now, proceeding further, uh, I'll show you a demo. Here, this is a very higher level summary of the demo. The, the step one is we'll be creating constraint classes and the constraint validator classes. Uh, followed by the step two, where we will be adding these constraints or the validation constraints to entity fields or the entities. And the step three is where you feel wow about after seeing the output. So let's go to the demo. So uh, I will come out of the slides and I will go to the editor. Uh, I'll simply comment this first. Uh, so I have I am commenting the form validations. I okay, I have commented the form validations now. Uh, if you see in the form module, we have have a SRC folder, then we have plugin folder followed by validation and constraint. Now this is the place or this is the namespace where your constraint and constraint classes are going to live. And the very first class I have defined is YouTube link. Now this is a constraint class 
uh, you can recognize them when they extend the constraint class over here. So I have a class called YouTube link. It extends the class constraint. And you can see that they are going to live in a namespace this, which is Drupal slash module name slash plugin validator constraint. And this class should be annotated. The annotation is this, which says iterate constraint, uh, which accepts two parameters. But the first one is ID. Uh, this is our constraint ID. Now this is should this should be a unique ID for the constraint. In our case, it is YouTube link. Uh, this is exactly the same as your class name as well and the file name. Uh, followed by the label parameter, it accepts a label. The label is YouTube link and the context. Now context can be anything, any any text. In our case, it is validation. Now in this class, we are basically defining a property called as invalid link error which says value is invalid, please enter YouTube URLs only. So this is the constraint that we have created. Now, after defining the constraint, we have defined a constraint validator class. Now, in our case, we have defined the constraint as YouTube link. Uh, and our constraint validator class is YouTube link validator. I am opening this file. So, so there is a prerequisite over here that Drupal expects from you that you name your classes as constraint name followed by the text validator. So if you so see over here, this is our constraint name and this is the validator. So this is the prerequisite for defining validators, validator classes. If you want to have some different name over here, then in that case you have to go to your constraint, constraint class and add a function over here uh, where you have to override that particular validator class. Now that function name is, for that you have to go to constraint class and there is a function called as validated by. If you write this particular function in your constraint class, you can override the file name that you want to write for the validator. So I close this. Yeah, coming back to the YouTube validator class. Now, as you can see, it extends a class called as constraint validator. Now, this is a symphony class. And this particular validator class lives in the same namespace as the constraint. Now, there is a mandatory function over here, which is called as validate. Uh, this is where your whole validation logic goes. Uh, if you remember earlier, we said we write constraints. Uh, where we define the rules and the actual validation logic goes in the constraint validators. Okay, so this is the validation logic I have written. I'll come back to this later on. Uh, before that, we go to the module file. So contain validation dot modules. In this file, I have added a hook called as entity hook entity bundle create info pointer. Now if you saw the step two earlier when we described the higher level demo summary, we said that we are going to attach our constraints to the fields or the entities. Now, using this particular hook, I am going to attach the validation or the constraint to the field. So I'll uncomment this. Let me just quickly clear the cache and I'll explain you the code till then. Okay. So in this particular function, I am checking if the entity type is node followed by the bundle check that the bundle should be moving trader and the field, the field URL should be there in this bundle. When all of these are set, we have to add a constraint to the field and the constraint name is YouTube link. Now this is the constraint that we have created. So this is how you attach your constraints to the field. Um, let's Go to the YouTube validator class. Uh, in this class, uh, the validate function will accept the value, and the value is going to be the value submitted by the user. Uh, this is the field data or the data submitted by the user. Uh, this is how we are uh, extracting the link from the field data, and we are passing it to a helper function 
where we are checking if the link is the YouTube link. And the helper function is basically doing the same thing. It is looking for the text uh, YouTube in the link. If the text is present, it is returning true, uh, otherwise false. And similar, uh, based on that, we have made a check over here. If the validation fails, then we are adding a violation uh, for this particular constraint. If you see this, we have added the void violation. And we need to add the violation uh, using this particular, uh, that we are accessing the property invalid link error. This property was defined earlier in the YouTube link class, if you see over here. We have defined this property and we are passing the value over here. And value is going to be the link that the user has submitted. So this is how we have defined the validation, uh, the constraint and constraint classes. Now let's go to the browser and see if the validations are working or not. So I'll simply go to the, um, just a moment, get the home page. OK, so here on the home page, and I'll go to the add content page of the movie trailer node. I'll add the mandatory data. And I'll add a URL, which is a non-native URL. And I'll simply click on the save. So if you see, we have the validation working. And this is not coming from the form holder. If you remember, we had commented the form holder code earlier. So this is coming from the constraint that we have defined and added to this particular field, which says uh, the validation, that is the link, is invalid. And you have to enter the YouTube URL only. So now there's nothing fancy about it. Uh, the same validation was working from the form holder as well. But let's go to the REST API or the REST. I'll try to create this particular node through REST API. I have the exact same data. Uh, I'll just simply make a change to title. So this is any dummy data. And I'll simply click on the send button. Oh, before sending this, Please note that this is an invalid URL. I'll click on send. Okay. If you see over here, we have got an error message which says entity validation failed. And we have this particular text over here which says the field colon URL is invalid and please enter YouTube URLs only. So this is a very different thing. Uh, when we use form filters, we did not get this behavior. But when we use entity validations uh, through entity API, that is uh, using Symfony validator component, we have written validations once, but they are getting called um, uh, through any medium that you try to create your content from. Uh, OK, this was uh, adding validations to fields. Now there is one more way through which you can add validations to your whole entity instead of a particular field. To do so, I'll simply uh, show you the code that I have written. I'll close this YouTube classes. Now, I have written two more constraints. Oh, sorry, one more constraint, which is YouTube summary. Now, this is a YouTube summary class. It extends, it extends the constraint class. It has an annotation, and the annotation has the ID of YouTube summary. It is living in this particular namespace, which is same as the YouTube URL one, or the YouTube link one. And it has a property called as invalid summary error, which says value is invalid. Summary length should be more than 10 characters. OK, uh, now. As we saw earlier, uh, for every constraint, you have to define a constraint validator class as well. I have defined a YouTube summary validator class. It is extending the constraint validator class, which is a symphony class. And it is giving in the same namespace as the constraint. 
Uh, same thing over here as well. We have a validate function, which is going to contain all the validation logic for or other your business rules basically. And we'll come back to this validate validate function later on. But let's go to the model file first. So in this module, we earlier saw how we attached our constraints to the fields. Now I have added the constraint to the node entity overall using this particular hook, which says hook entity type alter. I'll simply first uncomment this code and let me clear the cache. Since this is a hook, you have to clear the cache. Okay, so in this hook, I have written that for the entity types known, I am adding a constraint called as YouTube summary. So this is how you attach your constraints to the entity types. I I I told earlier we added for fields. Uh, let's go to the YouTube summary validator class. In the validate function, earlier when we attach the constraint to the field, we got the field value. But when we have added the constraint to the entity, you basically get the value as whole entity. So your value is nothing but your whole entity class. Now, I have added a check over here which says, does this entity has a field video, has a field name, field video summary. If, if the field is present, then get me the value of it uh, and check if the summary is invalid. Uh, to make a check, I am adding a helper function over here which says, is invalid summary which accepts our summary and the summary is from the user input. It is making a check if the string length is less than 10 characters return true, otherwise false. And when the summary is invalid, we are basically adding the violation over there. And this violation is added exactly same way as we added for the YouTube check. So we are adding the constraint followed by the constraint property which is in this case invalid summary error and it accepts an argument for this value which is which, which is nothing but the summary value submitted by the user. Okay, let's see this thing in action. Let's go to the node add page. I'll simply reload the page. Okay, we are on the node add page. I'll add the data. I'll add the YouTube URL for now so that we don't have this validation error. And I'll add the summary less than 10 characters. And I'll click on the save. If you see this, we have received an error which says your user in 12345 is invalid uh, and summary length should be more than 10 characters. Now, let's see this, if this thing works from the REST API as well or not. I will simply go to the REST API where we are adding, let's say, a new trailer followed, uh, and this is a YouTube link. But let's enter the invalid summary. Okay. The data has been entered, and I'll simply click on the save send button now. If you see over here, we have got a validation error message which says your input is invalid and summary length should be less than 10 characters. So, yeah, coming back, uh, this is a very important change from what we used to work in Drupal 7. Um, we used to write all the big forms and repeat our codes or the code for the, uh, the code for any sort of uh, REST API we wrote. So you repeated your validations and added the validations at multiple places. But using the constraint symphony, uh, symp with this particular symphony component, uh, you, have, you can write your validation once and you it at multiple places. Okay, so moving forward, yeah. 
This is certainly a wow moment for me. Was a wow moment for me when I learned it. And yeah, and if you have any question, please please shoot me. very useful. Um, we, we don't seem to have any questions, but thanks very much. Hello. It's not here, can you? Uh, it looks like we don't have any questions here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.